Buongiorno, Borreda, Buena Vista, Dun Roman, Marheil Maas, Marheil and Sachar, Sudikide. Good morning to my English speaking followers. I am walking up Hail a Gadeirlan and Guy Deeth. Mi vi the video bachama and Wenglish soups on Sisneg, soups on Gimnag. We are walking to Pont Cana this morning. Pont is the Welsh word for bridge. Cana, Cana, the bridge over Cana, not far from Canton, Tregana, the town of Cana. So Obviously, I've done my research this morning, as you can see. So, this was once considered a very nice area, very upmarket, very um, pleasant. However, it saw an influx of undesirables, and the undesirables being the middle class, the krachach, the kavrungis, people who work in the media, people who work in the assembly, the establishment. And uh, I mean, it brought the tone of the whole place down. And uh, here we have it now. It is hipster hell. I had to get myself in again, didn't I? I had to get myself in shot. It's the ego, you see. This vlogging really gets to you. You just want to see yourself in every shot. So you see behind me, a uh, a, a huge coffee shop and then maybe behind me all the hipster and the Chi Chi bars down this road so you've got Mortimer Road and you've got Poncana Street I believe Poncana Street is it? Yes Poncana Street so pause a moment hopefully you can hear me so today's psychogeographical tour is going to be called the Pont Cana Triangle. And the Pont Cana Triangle in the 80s and 90s was what was considered similar to the Mumbles Mile. So people would come here for a drink in the halfway, which is a public house coming up. No advertising, no free advertising for anybody in today's little video so yes you see these people are responsible for bringing all the kavrungis and the krakach in and uh, there's a variety of languages to be heard in Pontana either Welsh or English So yes, I mean, this used to be a very nice area, but uh, the Welsh establishment have moved in and ruined it. So they've given the halfway pub a lick of paint, William Street. So the halfway was one corner of the Pont Cana Triangle. And uh, we'll take you to another corner now. In Perth, see the nod with the adol, and the subadli ad gemrag, ar bobol kafardi sitem biuma, and the vaitor press igedano, vaitor press manu nerel, seven grove. So we're coming to the second corner of the Pont Cana Triangle. So you either drank like in the halfway, you had a pint in the halfway. 
And then uh, with all your buddies, all your mates in it, you'd sort of uh, high spirit it. You'd walk, totter, stumble down to the second corner of uh, the Poncana Triangle, down Mortimer Road. Mortimer, as in the Shakespearean Mortimer. And here we have the second corner. Can you guess what it is yet? Ooh, you can hear me a fin and puffin by here now. So they're getting ready to open, I think. 11 is opening now, isn't it? Oop, trip. So the money. An Isle, Isle Gornel, a Triangle Poncana, Tea Tavern, a Conway. So, pause you again. And whoever tells you Welsh independence is not a thing, have a look at that. Check that out. Check that out. Sweat on the brow, see? All this psychogeographing makes fat middle-aged men nice and sweaty. Sweaty Betty. Talking of sweaty Bettys, we are now going to the third and final port of call in the Pontcana Triangle. So, you'd add a few, you'd add a skinful in the halfway and the, the Conway, and then the siren went off in your head. The siren where you could drink late. And I think in those days, late was about one o'clock in the morning. I think closing was about 10. So, you know, having somewhere where you could go until one o'clock, I mean, that's three golden hours of more amber nectar. And in those days, that's all you did to anaesthetise the existential angst. You've probably heard of the Erd, the Welsh Youth Movement. No, not the Hitler Youth, the Welsh Youth. They have been in existence for a hundred years. And... Uh, this used to be their headquarters in Cardiff. So this building has been transformed, really, isn't it? Vicarage Mews, well. Hang on. Am I going to get some poetic inspiration here now? Ar erdd, llebi, cani, a chware, an awr, an Vicarage Mews. Oh, not brilliant, but, you know, it's something in it. So, there we are. This was the hotbed of Welsh language activism. Back in the day, never went in myself, but uh, to see it from the outside. And talking of Welsh... Talking of Welsh language activism, and now with the bells of a church singing, I think, ooh, what's going on? <laughs> Something you see every day. Group of lads cycling, playing the Marseillais. But the church bells are ringing. And this reminds me to take a tour down here, seeing as we were talking about the Welsh language. This is not part of the uh, Poncana Triangle, and neither is this one. Right. We're sure about Rai Ohonochi, Wadi Dvali, Ble Ninkerded, Aruan, Naur. 
but we can see through this gates automated gates CCTV in operation do not attempt to force gates so this was the gated community I was talking about flats and uh, high hedges and trees so, try remember the name so we'll come up to the next gate and I'll give you a bit of a hot dead history of what I know right the only thing that's left I mean by rights that should say Manedva shouldn't it and I'll tell you for why we are here outside what used to be St Winifred's nursing home and it was in here that the one of the founding fathers of Kenedley Tholdeb Cymraeg, Welsh nationalism, Saunders Lewis who made the radio broadcast Tanged in 1961 from where Cymraeg Tholdeb Cymraeg was formed after a protest on Pont Trevechan in Aberystwyth. It was in here that Saunders Lewis was in a Catholic nursing home because he became a Catholic, um, the son of a Methodist minister from Southport. So I'll pause a minute. So we've got all the warnings and not one of them in Gamrag. Nothing in Welsh, considering that it was in here that Saunders Lewis was uh, in a nursing home and uh, oh it's okay they're opening the gates they think I'm a tradesman so they were opening the gates to let me in but on a Sunday please and uh, I know somebody in Cardiff who went to visit him went to visit Saunders Lewis um, I don't think he actually died in St. Winifred, so I think he went home, went to his home in Penarth to uh, cross over the the uh, Rainbow Bridge, as to were. But um, yes, it was in there. Anyway, that was a detour and a um, digression. So we'll continue to the last point of the Pont Cana Triangle. Diolch Fawr. Right, I've stopped by here because down there where all those new buildings are, all the black buildings on the right hand side, that was the first job I had in Cardiff when I came to Cardiff, came back to Cardiff because uh, we lived here from 1966 66, yeah, to 69, so man first walked on the moon and then moved to North Wales and I came back in 1988 and the first job I had was down this alleyway um, I wonder if we walk down just to see what's down there now it was called Five Arts Press and it was run by a, a very irascible man called Hans I think he was Swiss Swiss German so this is a bit of a trip down uh, memory lane, isn't it? CCTV in operation, they're bloody everywhere, aren't they? Eh? Trying to pick up the undesirables. Right, so this must be where all the 
the rough end, the rough ends have been put to live. God, these look like slum dwellings, don't they? Really rough. God, I wouldn't want to live here rough. So, you see the black building behind me? That used to be a huge sort of factory unit. And it was there from September to December 1988. I worked as a print finisher for Five Arts Press for this gentleman called Hans. And then a week before um, Christmas, uh, he called me into the office and he said, you're sacked. Uh, and I said, why? He said, well, you said on your interview that you could do more than you actually could. So I was sacked for incompetence a week before Christmas, 1988. One of those rough types came out of their houses then, gave me a hell of a look. So I thought, well, I won't hang about here. So, yeah, uh, getting a sack just before Christmas. I mean, heartless bastard, really, wasn't it? Eh? I mean, he... Incompetence. Well, that's something that uh, you got to live with. It's not the first time, just before Christmas. When was it? Christmas 2020? They stopped my universal credit just before Christmas. No wonder I don't like Christmas. So, by you, we're on the corner of Poncana and Canton. So down that road is Canton, and we're going to go up this road, which is for so the celebrity trivia for you there. Um, you know Charlotte Church? Her mother used to be the landlady in that pub. So we're moving in close to the final corner of the Podcana Triangle. Can you stand the tension? Typical. Can't get too close, but you see where that green awning is? And the guy's doing the old uh, jet washing? That used to be called the Cameo Club. So it was there that we would go after the halfway or the Conway or taxi from town and into the Conway, knock on the door, say the password, which was, I've got money. And uh, they'd let you in and that was it. You'd be there till one o'clock in the morning. You can see proper slum area this. Delis, clean coffee bars also. And that brings to an end this episode of Psychogeography with Dev Drugdabis Williams. Thank you. <laughs>